today I would like to take you all on a journey of a young refugee. I spent the first 15 years of my life in a refugee camp of Nepal. Thousands of Nepali-speaking Bhutanese were persecuted from Bhutan in the year 1990. My parents were one of them. I was born in a refugee camp of Nepal. While the temporary settlement started, 30 children died every day. They lacked proper nutrition, food, clean water, shelter, and clothes. Generally, they lacked resources. They had no idea where and when the change would begin. They lacked education. Then came United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, and many other Western organizations came and supported these refugees. They built temporary houses made of bamboo and plastic, and they built schools for kids. Many countries have access to technology. Computers, iPads, phones that you can access, look at your lectures, send email, and Skype. But my experiences were different when I went to school. I was six years old when I started going to school. It was a 30-minute walk every day to get to my English educational school. Every night after coming back from school, I used to sit next to a kerosene lamp and study. I struggled. I saw the hardship, and I've been through it. Because of that one reason, I've always valued education in my life. And if I have loved something dearly, it has always been education. In those days, I was taught using a chalkboard. To be able to use a pen, I had to pass grade four successfully. And the excitement to hold that one pen was just astounding. I didn't have access to internet to Google what photosynthesis meant. I had to go, go through piles of books and pass my exams every year. But luckily, I had teachers that had finished year 12 from same school and came back to teach the younger generation. And no, they didn't require a degree to be able to pass on their knowledge. Not only I was able to gain education, but my father worked very hard as a community health worker, and my mother was a social worker for women and children. Over the weekend, they used to run a shop, and I used to help them. They did their best to give us a very healthy life and fulfilled every desire I had in that time. I was very young when I joined Children Forum. And that supported me to have a healthy upbringing and many other kids. They provided us protection and they also gave us sexual health education. They gave us trainings and they taught me how to be a good actor. I started doing drama, public speaking and dancing. I saw hardship. I used to walk down to the community and health centers with my dad. And I used to get shocked looking at those people suffering every day. They were dying. They had curable and non-curable health diseases. And I wasn't liking it. That wasn't the way how I wanted to see the world, how I wanted to see my community. And I looked at my dad and said, Dad, I want to study nursing and help these people. And my dad said, but this is not possible here. There, there are no resources, and the schools are only up to year 10, and you have to go out of the camp, pay a lot of money to study. And I said, well, I want to help. I want to do what you're doing. And he said, we will see. Today, I would like to share a fact with you all. There are about almost 20 million refugees around the world, 
and the majority of the population is of women and children. And you'll be shocked when I share this with you that most educated women and children are at risk of being kidnapped and trafficked. I was at a similar situation. Luckily, I escaped. Days, months, and years had passed, but the hope my family and thousands of other refugees had to be repatriated to Bhutan remained still. In 2007, seven different countries opened a way for these refugees to resettle permanently in respected countries. My family and I came to Australia in 2009. My life suddenly changed from being so dark to bright. So did the chalkboard when I started school in Darwin High. I had a whiteboard there. I was amazed. I was amazed by the system and everything. I met good people all over the place. I met friends and they taught me how to get used to the environment, the public areas, schools and everything. And every one of them had inspiring stories behind them. And it was just wonderful to listen to them and get inspired. I was very lucky. But soon after, I had to move to Cairns. My family decided to come to Cairns. I went to a local high school and TAFE college. I became student of the year 2011 and gold medalist in cultural and community services. Apart from that, I used to run a local community radio and I was a youth president for Bhutanese Communities Youths. In my spare time, I used to volunteer with migrants and care migrant services. And I always wanted to work with people community. I used to support new migrant arrivals in Cairns to adjusting a new Western living. And my passion was to work with young people and community. I always wanted to represent my community. And that passion turned real when I was accepted to be part of Cairns Regional Council's Youth Advisory Board. We were able to introduce programs that weren't available in Cairns. Despite being a refugee, education had led me to seek for opportunities, not just in Cairns, but for a short period of time in Sydney, I had the wonderful opportunity to be part of Multicultural Youth Network program. I hosted the program and it was wonderful. And I was amazed by the geographical, financial and economical limitation young people had comparing to other cities in Australia. Although I enjoyed my stay in Sydney, I decided to move back to Cairns again. I loved Cairns. I came here and I thought, why not I give it a go on the degree that I dreamt when I was in a refugee camp? And the other thing that I want to add on today, I wasn't seeing my community and the concern just for those people that I saw in the camp. That concern was still here in Australia. I saw people suffering. They still were suffering from different health diseases. And that wasn't the way how I wanted to see it again. I started studying Bachelor of Nursing Science through James Cook University. Currently, I'm in my second year of nursing. Since I believe education to be fundamental part of human lives, I have been continuously supporting the nursing cohort at James Cook University as a mentor leader to smoothen their learning needs. And I also work at the local hospital. And I feel honored to share with you all that today, all of this work that I did, all the volunteer services that I did, I was recognized as a Cairns Young Women of the Year 2015. (laughs) 
As a former refugee living in Australia, I have utilized every experiences and education that I gained in a refugee camp. And I have become a young opportunist person here. If I can, you can. Thank you.